Wubba lubba dub dub. Let's do a cars for sale in Japan part 14. I know these are the most popular videos on the channel, so we definitely have to get at least one more in before we leave island. Hopefully we'll do a couple more. But let's start it off with this Toyota Carina GTTR. Got a bunch of stuff in it. I guess this is still considered in the for sale lot. We're over here at Johnny's Used Cars. We've been to a different Johnny's before, right outside Kadena Gate 1. This one is outside of Foster, which is another base. And uh, they usually have a little bit better cars than the one right outside of Kadena. Now, this R32 GTST has a plate on it, a Y plate. So this must be a, some car that somebody's already purchased. It looks pretty clean though. Some gauges up there. We'll skip over this one though for the most part since I don't think that one's for sale. Got the normal stuff like the Accords, Crowns, the B4s, the Fugas. Now I believe this is the one that is on the cover photo for my most popular video, Cars for Sale Japan Part 2, which was at the Johnny's outside of Kadena but I think they moved it over here and it actually has a sold sticker on it. That is crazy. I have been, I was over here maybe a month ago and there wasn't a sold sticker on it, but they were asking like 15, $16,000 for this thing. It's been here for sale for a while. It's not a bad car. It's got its blemishes, obviously. I mean, most cars do around here. That fitament though, <laughs> that's pretty bad. Oh man, it's got some nasty rust spots though, right there on the bag, you can see it bubbling up. I hope somebody got a good deal on this one. You know, I'm all for dealers making their money, making their cut, but asking like 16,000 for this thing, there's no way that that's right. So hopefully they lowered the price and got this thing sold to somebody. We'll skip on past the vans and stuff and head over here to this R33. GTS 25T Type M. 1994, they're asking 9,900 US dollars. All the prices you see in this video will be US dollars because we're at a dealership right outside a military base. That confuses a lot of people. I guess it's on sale from 10,900. Not an awful price though, considering this thing can go back, what, next year? And it looks pretty clean, the body looks nice. It's got the Recaros in there, the confetti type Recaros. Nardi wheel. Bubbly window tint, but that's not really a big deal. My window tint's kind of shot in the back. I've always thought these R33 spoilers were kind of interesting. The way they, if you were to take off the spoiler, it would look really weird because the trunk is right here and the fender line's right here. Not a bad car though. Got an Aristo. Decently clean looking. Rear seat's all jacked up, but who knows. And it's an automatic. I'm actually not sure if the Aristo came in a, a five speed, but it does have the 2JZ twin turbo. I'm just not sure if they were offered from the factory with a stick shift. I'm sure somebody will correct me on it. But let's see, 6,200 US dollars, sale price 4,900. Not too bad. Here's your Nissan Skyline. And for anybody that wants to call me out, these are Nissan Skylines in Japan. It's not an R30, or it's not a G35 or a G37. It's an 03 Nissan Skyline that's on sale for $5,900. I mean, kind of an old car to be priced like that, but it's not its not a bad price. It looks clean, all blacked out. It is the automatic though. Debadged, looks really clean, debadged. Let's keep it going with the Subaru WRX. 
speed line wheels. This one is a five speed. 01, $8,200, sale price $7,200. Meh. A little high of what I would want to pay, but it looks pretty clean. Nothing but pretty boring basic cars over this way. I would share if it was anything interesting, but it's really not. But I do know they keep their sports cars under those tents over there, so let's go check those out in just a second. I also know there's Alteza lovers out there, so this is just for you. I'm not getting any closer than this because it's an Alteza, but this is for you guys. How about the Mercedes-Benz 500 SL? I don't know if this is for sale. I don't see a price tag on it, but it's just sitting here with flat tires and rust everywhere. Without looking this up, I mean, I'm not sure, but I'm sure it came with some kind of big motor under there. It is left-hand drive as well. But it has seen better days for sure. Look at the rear of this thing. That is just nasty. That's why you gotta be careful buying cars in Okinawa. Because you can find some good ones here, but a lot of them end up like this. Randomly, before we carry on, how about this FC RX-7 that's just sitting over here with no motor in it, chilling. Looks like it's got some kind of vinyls on it, like maybe it was some kind of race car, drift car, or something at some point. Just another random thing of Japan. Carrying on to the FD RX-7. This thing actually looks pretty nice. Obviously the carbon fiber's seen, seen its better days as well. Faded and a little chipped. Something's over there. Oh, it's a bike. But I do like the FD. I like the hood on it. I've always loved FDs. It would definitely be a car I would like to own in the future. Got the Project Moo sticker on it. Maybe some Project Moo brakes on there. I don't know. Hard to tell. I like all the arrow pieces added on though. Recaro seat. It's actually Recaro passenger and bride driver seat. Inke wheels. Nice big old wing. This is a like a nice 50 footer FD. From 50 feet away this thing looks pretty awesome. You get up on it though and you start seeing its blemishes. And this is another one they don't have the price listed on, but this one's been over here for a little bit too. It's got so many cool like carbon fiber aero pieces that are just not what they used to be. Like they've obviously been on the car for a while. It's been chipped up. It's been probably hit on the curve or something right there, backing into a parking spot. But I love all the pieces on here and somebody could definitely spend the money to revive them, I guess. HKS certificates, 2007 Hyper Challenge and Super Drag Meeting. So I wonder if this was a drag FD. But it's been checked out by HKS and it says the car checking is okay. So you guys are good. I mean, the sticker doesn't look like it's 20 years old or anything. That's pretty cool though to have this kind of history right there on there. Kind of hard to get a look at the interior and I'm pretty sure all these are locked. That kind of shows it hasn't moved in a while. But I like it. I like the FD. I like it in red. It just needs some little love. Now this is nice. Nissan Bluebird. It is a 1974 Datsun 610 True Classic. That's what it says on the windshield. Four speed. This thing really is nice. This thing's really cool. They are asking 17,500 US dollars for it. But it looks to be in better condition than the FD and definitely the Mercedes. The door handles look like they could use some kind of refinishing, but that's nothing to really scare away from buying a car. Love the old school wheels. It's a nice looking car. It's got a few spots down there on the bumper. 
little rust spots, but nothing really through. It just looks like kind of some surface rust on that chrome finishing. Rear deck panel a little bit messed up. I don't think there's speakers in there. The SSS. Does everything have a Nardi wheel in it these days? I love fender mirrors, those are so cool. They're really a pain to drive with if you've ever driven with them, but they're cool looking. Nice looking Nissan Bluebird. I don't know about the price. I haven't really priced these out before anywhere else. It seems like it might be a little high, but I mean, it's at a dealership in Okinawa, so it would make sense if it's just a little bit high. You guys let me know what you think. All right, let's keep it going. We have a few more cars out here. We have the Toyota Verosa. These also come with a 1JZ asking 6,900. And this is another car that I'm not sure if came with a factory stick shift at all. I've seen a few with them, so I'm not sure if they were swapped, but I'll have to look it up when I get home. And then we have a Fair Lady Z version T special edition, whatever the heck that means. I've never heard of that. Sale price on it, 6,500 US dollars. It's an 03. Looks pretty basic. Someone will probably scoop this up here in the next week and drive it around. Not a bad looking car. Not the biggest fan of it, but it is just a basic Z. I don't see any real blemishes with it though. This Honda Fit's kind of cool. I guess worth the feature. It's got some like arrow pieces on it, it looks like. Some shining east wheels. Asking 4,500 US dollars for the fit. Not bad looking. Another Carina. GTR Carina, 1984, sale price 9,800, five speed. This one actually looks pretty clean. I don't see too many of these cruising around. I've seen a couple out of customs night. Not the most common cars though. How about that different GTR badge you guys are probably used to seeing? I could sport it as like a 10th car or something maybe. All right, let's move over to this beautiful FD. This one actually looks to be in really nice condition from the rear at least. I haven't got to look at the front. Keys wheel, stock passenger seat, some kind of aftermarket driver's seat, but it's hard to tell. I don't see any logos on it. The auction report looks like it was a grade four car, which isn't bad. 58,951 kilometers. Really a pretty good looking car. A lot better condition than the red one. Sale price on it is 12,900 US dollars. Obviously, I think you guys know it's 13B rotary twin turbo. Nice wheels on it. Yeah, I'd have to get this one over the red one just because this one's way cleaner. Which one would it be for you guys? The white one or the red one? Let me know in the comments. I don't think we touched on the Cresta before, but it's another 1JZ car, turboed, 5,500 US dollar asking price. It's another one of these cars like the Cresta and the Aristo, a lot of people end up drifting. Automatic. This one looks pretty much completely factory, so it'd be a good building platform to start with. 
that's gonna do it for Johnny's this morning. They actually started opening up and employees started coming in. I got there way before they opened just so I could film some for you guys because I don't like being bothered by them. I don't know how they'd feel about it really. But I beat them out there, got at least 30 minutes in before they showed up. But uh, now it's time to fill up the GTR for possibly the last time. Well, not even fill it up actually because we're almost on the end. We only have 6,000 yen, which is about $55. And it cost about 9,000 yen or $85 to fill up the GTR in Japan. But this should be the last time we put gas in it with only 11 days left. What's going on? I mean, Relax, it's... Morty. Don't don't worry about it. Let's just just see where this goes. He's making himself a sandwich now. Hey, everybody! So this is my house. Just made a sandwich, peanut butter and jelly. Still here. Still selling fake doors. What? Oh my God! It's still the commercial. We have fake doors like you. For premium. Sometimes we'll get cool commercials, but this time it looks like it's just a commercial for the gas station. Every car guy knows you got to be careful pulling it out. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's what she said. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this Cars for Selling Japan series video because I don't think it'll be my last, but who knows? Time is really coming to an end here. Uh, we actually went out this morning to shoot this video at like 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning and then went to work. And now I'm back home after work. It's around 5 o'clock now. And we're just gonna chill. Mason is here with me, so we're gonna hang out, probably play a little bit of Mario Kart or something like that. Not much more time left with the GTR. I think I have everything squared away with it. No more little leaks. There's a couple of parts I still gotta put on. I'm still waiting on a couple other parts and then I'll put it on. I'll show you guys all that in a different video. Hopefully they all get here before it's time to leave. We'll see. I'm gonna do a whole video on the whole shipping process for kind of help out some of the military people here that are beginning to go through the same process. And as I do that video, I'll also talk about some of the processes of shipping a car if you're not with the military and you're doing it on your own personal time and money. But there's also a few things that I'll go over, like removing some of the parts before I ship it. Like I hear a lot of people end up stealing stuff at the port. It might be the port in the States, but easy stuff like shift knobs, these little rays, uh, valve stem cover caps, and I have a Nismo uh, oil cap, so I'll probably remove that and put all the stock stuff back on just to make sure nobody steals the kind of random little cool stuff. But we should have some pretty cool videos before we leave Japan. It looks like in about two weeks I'll be heading up to Nagoya to do a few more videos with Garage Defend, so you guys should see some pretty awesome content coming before I get out of here. We we'll only have about four weeks left, but in two weeks, like I said, we'll be up there for about three days and I'll just be up there doing some videos and just enjoying some time getting to talk to them. So to end this video, since it is a Cars for Sale in Japan series, I'm gonna put one of the Garage Defend cars that they have currently for sale right at the end of this video. It's a 1992 Suzuki Cappuccino. They're really cool little cars, turbo, rear wheel drive, and they're cheap. This one I can get to you guys in the States for $7,500 shipped. That's export fees and shipping to any major port in the US and it's a really pretty awesome little car. I think it's got around 100,000 kilometers. If you guys wanna know all the details and see all the detailed pics, I will send those all to you if you guys wanna message me on here on Facebook or Instagram. But anyways, I'll see you guys very soon in the next video. As always, thanks for watching.